Hey guys, so this video is going to be a bit different. I'm bringing on a special guest today. His name is Matt Shields. You've probably seen him on you know, some other channels at this point. But basically, he runs a very successful agency doing over six figures per month. And I'm going to sit down with him and basically break down you know, what actually makes a successful agency a successful agency owner and more specifically later in the video we talk about you know how do you actually have a great service delivery and get results for our clients because i know a lot of you guys are struggling with that i was struggling with that so if you don't know what you're doing if you're trying to build an agency you're basically going nowhere or you just want to learn how to have a better service delivery and actually get results for your clients sit back relax and enjoy the video hello everyone so today we got a very special video recording whatever you want to call this um never done this type of video before but today i have a very special guest matt i'm going to let him introduce himself talk more about um, himself in a moment but uh basically high level this guy is very you know runs a very successful agency knows a lot more about building agencies running agencies having a great service delivery than i do so i thought i would bring him on uh you know he's been on other youtubers channels before you've probably seen him around uh, but basically, I thought he could provide a lot of value to you guys and to myself. Um, so just going to have a quick chat with him. And we are going to hopefully extract as much value as we Let's possibly can from him. So, yeah, Matt, uh, welcome. Thanks for coming on. And, you know, why don't you just tell us a bit about yourself to start? Yeah, Ryan, thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. Uh, I guess to keep it short, my name is Matt. I've built six SMMAs in the last four and a half years. Um, five of those went from anywhere from 8K a month to 40K a month. And our most recent, Estate AI, has gone from zero to 300K a month in one year. So for whatever reason, I've dedicated my life to building SMMAs. And I'm not good at many things, but I'm good at building an SMMA. So uh, all of these journeys, all of these these trials, learning from people like Joel Kaplan, Cole Gordon, Alex Ramosi, learning from the top people in this game uh, has taught me so much about business and about myself that I just, I love talking to people like Ryan and being able to share the journey and providing value that I wish somebody had provided me when I first started in this journey. I, I dropped out in ninth grade, so I didn't go to uh, school. I didn't go to college. I just went to YouTube and I just watched YouTube videos all day long. And I, I swear I've seen the most valuable YouTube videos on the internet and it feels really good to be able to come back to the platform that taught me. It's almost like a, a student who graduated from a college and then they become a professor. You know, like I still have so much to learn. Don't get me wrong. I'm a student of this game. But to be able to go from, you know, YouTube University graduate to being able to actually provide value on YouTube videos, it's just a really cool thing for me. So I'm grateful to be here and excited to answer any questions that you have, man. Yeah. Awesome. Incredible. And, you know, it's funny you say that being like a YouTube um, university professor, but like, you know, how yeah. old are you, Matt? <laughs> uh, I actually just turned 22 today. It's actually my birthday. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Damn. Thank I didn't you, know man. that. Um, but I mean, that's crazy, right? Like I'm out here 26 and then there's guys like you saying, oh yeah, I've been through the ringer. I've graduated from yeah. entrepreneurship university at the right age of 22. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's pretty inspiring for a lot of the guys because I know a lot of, you know, the audience is younger, a lot of people in high yeah. school, college. Um, so it's great because I feel like sometimes I'm a bit out of that age range sometimes. Like I can't really relate to a lot of my audience. So Which is crazy though, because like you're 26. Like and, I know, and right? <laughs> it's it's cra it's a really interesting world where like 26, I feel old at 22, dude. Like literally today, I'm like, damn, can't I just say I'm 21 for one more day, like one more YouTube video? But I'm like, I'm 22 now. Like that's so crazy. We're maybe a fourth of the way through our life and we're starting to feel old. Um, Hermosi made this post on Instagram the other day that was like 20 isn't the new 30. It's like 30 isn't the new 20 or something like that. Like if you have a goal for your life, like if you want to achieve something, you get out and you do it now. Don't waste your 20s because someone told you to. And I tend to agree with that. I think the younger you start off in this game, if you're 15, 16, 17, good. Like the sooner you get going in this game, the more time you have in the game. It's not about how old somebody is. It doesn't matter if they're 30, 40, 50. It matters how long have they been playing the game. So I'm 22, but I've been playing this game for four and a half years. So I might have more experience than the 30, 35 year old, even though they're way older than me. So all the young kids who are listening to this, you are doing the right thing. You are on the right path. The sooner you get in the game, the more experience you have playing, the more successful that you will be. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And like, you know, because for me, I look around at these guys. Like, I started, I started after I graduated college, right? Actually, not even that. Like three years after I graduated college, I was like, okay, now let's try to take my life seriously. But yeah, I totally mm. agree. Like, the earlier you start, the better. Even if you don't go quickly, like if you spend five years going at it, you'll be like early twenties and you'll be <laughs> a millionaire, right? Like, it's it's crazy to think about. Um, so kind of yeah. on that point, like, what kind of got you into entrepreneurship in the first place? Like, what made you want to? I think you dropped out of high school, right? I dropped out in ninth grade. I ended up doing classes online. So I, I technically have a diploma, but honestly, I just cheated. Like I just, I just straight up used Quizlet and my senior year of high school, dude, this is a crazy like life hack. I finished my senior year, two full semesters, six credits of classes in three days because all of the assignments you could just do right away. You didn't have to wait for them to be released. So I just went and I did all of the assignments in three days and I just used Quizlet and I used like previous work I'd already done and I finished my senior year of high school in three days. So uh, that's just a kind of a, a side note of a little education hack for any of the young people out there. If you're serious about business, I'm not saying cheat in school, but if you go to an online program, you can graduate. Literally, you can finish four years in like two weeks. Like it's great. You could be graduated at age 14, age 15 and start building a business, which is what I wish I did. But what got me into the game, honestly, Ryan, was a lot of darkness. There's inspiration and there's desperation. For me, I was in a very, very desperate place. Um, I struggle with a lot of anxiety. I struggle with a lot of depression. And I had uh, OCD and just a lot of mental challenges since I was probably 10 years old. Um by the time I was maybe 14, 15, I was just a very, very depressed kid and I had really low self-esteem. I probably had the lowest self-esteem of anybody you'll ever meet, to be honest. And I'm not, I don't say that as an exaggeration. I mean, I I had no belief in myself. I didn't want to talk to anybody, not even my own family. Um and I was just in this really desperate place of like, I know college is not gonna be it. I know school's not going to be it. I know working a job's not going to be it. So how do I get out of this darkness? Like, I don't care about the cars. I don't care about the nice things. I don't care about the girls. I just want to be able to put a roof over my head, put food on the table. I just want to be able to survive. I just want to be able to live. And I was at the point where if I didn't learn how to make money, I had given up on my life. So it was life or death for me to figure out how to make money. And I just started looking into ways to make money when I was probably 17. I was looking into drop shipping, building websites, programming, all that good stuff. I got into website design and I started building sites with WordPress and I loved it, but I realized it was a terrible business model. So that led me to digital marketing and Google ads, SEO, all that stuff. The thing that always resonated with me the most was social media marketing. It just made sense. It just seemed logical and I seem, it seemed like something I could do. So I bought a course for 600 bucks, uh, split it with my parents. I told my mom, I, I want to buy this course. She started crying. I started crying with her because for a 17 year old kid to feel like I'm not going to college, I'm not going to get a job. That's like a parent's worst nightmare. Like you're not going to go the traditional route. Really? Like, you're not going to go to college. Like, she was like, just get a marketing degree. Just do this after. And I was like, I can't. I just, I can't do that. I'm no, I know I'm not going to be happy that way. I'd rather die than go to college. That's how I felt. So I bought this course. Um, I didn't make anything for the first four months. But after about seven months, my agency was doing about 20K. And uh, it's been history ever since. So that's what led me up to it. A lot of darkness, a lot of desperation and just needing to figure out a way to survive. I wish it was sexier than that, but it, it wasn't sexy at all. So that's the story. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like interesting because especially when it comes to like depression and, you know, mental health, I think a lot of people, the the usual story is, you know, they kind of give into it. They go on, I don't know, fucking antidepressants for for a year and then they just kind of they use it as an excuse to kind of mm. keep themselves down right so i'm just wondering like i mean i i kind of have a similar story like i think when i graduated i was like and after i started working full-time i was like really unhappy with my life right um but i wonder like what do you think is the difference between those people that like do something about it and like actually use it to you know as fuel to change your mm. life versus those that just kind of sit there and kind of do nothing and make excuses that's a great question I felt sorry for myself for a long time 
So I'm not I'm not going to look down on anybody who's in that place right now or has been through that place because I I went on antidepressants. Fucking terrible for you by the way. Yeah. Oh my god, like literally poison, evil poison. And uh it, it numbed me. It made me a zombie. I stopped feeling sad, but I just felt nothing. Like I felt no emotion. It was it was terrible. Um what made me push through it I think was this weird belief that I could. It was like this there were three years of my life, Ryan, from age 15, 16, 17, where I was just like hopeless. I woke up every day and I was just like, my life is over. I'm just waiting for the day where I'm old enough to call it quits because I don't want to do this to my mom right now. Like that, that's where I was at for three years straight. I was hopeless. I had given up. But just continuing to do the micro actions every day, continuing to try to get outside of my comfort zone, to try to grow, to try to do things that I found some enjoyment in, like playing basketball, going to the gym, the the micro actions build the macro results. I'm very, very big on that. So I just kept doing the, the micro actions and across a long enough time, the compound interest from those actions paid off. Like some people think just you have it or you don't. But this agency, this this business that I've had to build has been created over the last 21 years of consistent micro actions. It's not just the last year of building the agency. It's a lifetime of action. So I kept doing the small things on a daily basis, reading, learning, trying to study wisdom, trying to learn why I felt the way I felt, what was holding me back, what information did I lack that other people had that if I understood could solve the way that I was feeling. And so I just kept going. I kept learning and I kept trying consistently. And after five years, it finally started to pay off. And now after probably seven years, I'm just I'm so fucking grateful, dude. It's hard to put into words like it's easy to flex the 300K a month, all that shit. It gets views. I get it. But just the fact that I'm alive and I wake up every day and I have people in my life that I care about, like everything else is just the cherry on top of the the actual game, the actual goal, which is just living, just being alive. So that's what got me out of it, man, I think was just the micro actions. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the start of that, like, I think that's kind of the interesting point is when, because there's, there's kind of like that part of you that says, like, like you said earlier, you just kind of believed in yourself, right? For whatever reason, you're just like, yeah, you, I can make, th make it through this somehow. But I feel like that's kind of the missing piece that a lot of people don't have. That I talk to sometimes they just don't have that like initial spark of belief in themselves um and I think that's like I don't know where that comes from um but I want to touch on you know what you said about the because <laughs> you're just well, real, real real quick because I feel like yeah. a lot of people are in that that place so if I can touch on that yeah I didn't believe in myself for a really long time like three years straight I didn't believe in myself at all I had mm. extremely low self-esteem but I like one day I guess it just like hits you like you just realize like wait this is actually possible. Like it's actually real for you to get out of this. And I think that there's direct experiences and there's indirect experiences. And, and for me, the indirect experience of watching a guy on YouTube named Billy Wilson, shout out to Billy. That's the guy whose course I bought watching a Billy Wilson video where I was like, Hey, this guy's not like a super smooth, charismatic salesman. He seems like, you know, he's, he's probably struggled with his own shit and he has, he's one of my good friends. Now I was like, man, He's going through all this stuff, but he's making videos about how he makes six figures in an agency. So if he did it, why can't I do it too? I didn't believe in myself, but I realized that Billy had done it. So therefore, there is a way for me to do it too. Yeah, Billy had done it, so there's a way for me to do it too. So when you see somebody that you can relate to, you can realize that it is possible. And it's the realization. It's not even belief. It's just realization. Because belief mm. assumes that it could be true, it could not. But realization is accepting it as fact. It is fact you can make 10K a month. It is fact you can make 100K a month. Seeing somebody else do it, I think, is one of the most powerful things, which is why I love doing videos like this. Hopefully, there's one 15-year-old kid, 17-year-old kid who watches this, and he's like, fuck, that guy did it. I can do it too. And that was the turning point for me. Yeah. No, that, now that you talk, now that you mentioned that, I think I have to agree with that i think that's probably what sparked it for me too because yeah before like i was very much like in the rat race right like i went to university went you know worked in corporate and then yeah. i saw this dude like um this fucking like 16 year old talking about drop shipping i was like if this kid can like do this like why can't i right? it's also how i got into youtube um like i don't know and if look you know at you now dude you got, 10, <laughs> you got like twelve thousand subs or something already 
yeah but i was like super camera shy i was like i'm very introverted right a little socially awkward like that, that's just kind of how i, I grew Same. up and then like <laughs> And I see Same. these guys on YouTube. I'm like, if this guy can like, you know, get a million subs, like, you know, change people's lives, change his own life. I'm like, I can speak to a camera at the very least. Right. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think I think you're very right in the sense that like that. it's just a realization. Um, but I do want to touch on the, <laughs> the thing you talked about earlier. You're very casually just like, yeah, I just uh, saw no results for four months. And all of a sudden, like a few yeah. months later, I built a 20K per month agency. Right. Like, how does that happen? Yeah. So it is the compound effect. It's exactly what we're talking about. The micro actions across a long enough time frame will create the macro results that you desire. The problem is most people either don't put in the micro actions or they don't put in the micro actions for a long enough time horizon. So if you just do the consistent thing that you know you should do, that sucks, it's hard, but you know you should do, and you do it for a long enough time, you will get to the place where you never have to do that thing ever again in your life. For me, it was like making cold calls. I made like 100, 200 cold calls a day for like months when I started off and I sent cold emails and I offered free trials and I just continued to take the micro actions every single day and the compound effect or as my mentor uh, Joel Kaplan refers to the popcorn effect. This is one of my favorite uh, thought experiments or mental models uh, of all time. The popcorn effect is the reason that it all worked out and that those four months of nothing turned into three months later, running 20K a month, the popcorn effect basically states when you put popcorn in the microwave and you press that go button, the popcorn starts spinning. Nothing happens. Like for the first minute, or two, I don't eat popcorn, so I might get it wrong. But like for the first minute or two, nothing happens. The popcorn just spins around, spins around, spins around. Nothing pops. But as you near the end of the popcorn being in that microwave with a minute left, it starts to pop slowly, but surely it starts to pop. By the last 20, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, it's popping all over the place and it's just going crazy. But if you only put the popcorn in for a couple minutes and you took it out before it started to pop, you would never see the actual popcorn. So most people are taking the actions. They put the popcorn in the microwave, but they only let it spin around for a minute or two and then they take it out and they go on to the next thing. If you can wait till the end, you will feel the popcorn. It will pop. If you do the consistent actions for a long enough time, it will pop and then you can start building a team. You have money, which is an amazing form of leverage. You never have to cold call again a day in your life. You never have to work for free a day again in your life, but you have to take the micro actions that suck in the beginning for a long enough time horizon to get to where you want to go. And then the popcorn pops. Yeah, no, that's like, and yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And like, I think what's really important for like people who are just starting out is just getting that first kind of that that first batch of popcorn, right? Like, because right. it's really hard to believe in that process until you've seen it happen in action at least once. Um, and I think like, I mean, there are many ways to go about it, in my opinion, like it doesn't have to be through business. Like it could be, um, you know, working at the gym, um, you know, maybe putting in the reps to like, I don't know, approach girls, or whatever, right? Like just something where you can like, it's that delayed gratification where you can see yeah. that, okay, like if I just do something for a long enough time, there's always going to be that, you know, that hockey, the hockey stick graph. Right. And for me, it was like, I saw it happening with drop shipping. I, like I ate shit for like seven months and then finally like things started to pick up. Right. And then mm. obviously I got out of the business model, but like after that, I was like, okay, if I just apply the same thing, same mindset to like YouTube, to my agency, I know it'll work someday. And I think like for beginners, cause I see a lot of people, right. They send like a hundred cold emails. They send like a hundred DMs, cold calls. And they're like, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if this is working, right? I'm like, it's probably not, but like, you're going to have to keep doing it to to figure it out or just to, you know, see where it ends up. Um, yeah. But I guess, I guess kind of on the point that we're like, for that beginner who's just sent the, those first few hundred messages or whatever, um, how do they, like, how do they know whether they're on the right track? <laughs> like, as I think like they send it, they get some results. Like, like it could be like 101 things, right? If they don't have a course or they can't afford a course, yeah. like, what do you think? Cause I see that happen so much in my discord server, right? People would like say, I did this. I don't know what's happening. It's not working. And then, but you don't really know where they're at unless you're like coaching them or whatever. Right. So like, where would yeah. you, what would you do if you're in that position? Really good question. Um, how do people know if they're on the right track? How do people know if they're on the right track? That's a really good question. There are so many different steps to a successful agency. There's getting a response on a cold call or a Facebook DM. There's booking a meeting. There's taking the meeting. There's closing the free trial. There's closing the person after the free trial. There's keeping the person. There's building a team that keeps the person. Like there's so many different levels. 
if you can just like map out the process, like literally those, those eight or nine steps I just said, write them out on a piece of paper and then just see, are you continuing to move on to the next step? Over six to 12 months, are you continuing to move along to the next step? Have you gotten a response? Have you booked a meeting? Has somebody showed up to the meeting? Have you closed the free trial on the meeting? Have you, and you just keep following that? You don't need to get to the final level in the first year. Don't even expect to. Just expect to get a couple of levels further than you are currently. And if you can just keep making that progress and just keep asking yourself, how do I go from level one to two to three to four to five? And you just keep going. As long as you are on that trajectory and you're not going backwards, then you're you're in the right uh you're in the right place. You're you're making the right moves. The question is, what do you do if you've been doing it for five months and you're not going from level two to three? What do you do? Well, you need to innovate. Clearly, something is not working. And as Einstein, I think, said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So don't do that. If it's not working, something has to change. If you're cold calling and it's not getting anywhere, you have to try a different form of outreach. If your meetings aren't closing, you have to try a different script or you probably suck at sales. Most people suck at sales in the beginning. So just expect to suck, but take the data, use the data to improve the thing that you are delivering. You can't expect to be great from the beginning. You have to put in reps, but if you can review every sales call you ever take, everything that you ever say on these calls, if you can have somebody else give you feedback too, and you just become obsessed with the micro adjustments to create those improvements. And you just see, how can I iterate? How can I iterate? How can I iterate? Same thing with product, by the way, this client's ad sucked. How can we change the copy? How can we change the offer? How can we change the creative? And you just keep iterating. That will get you the results, but it's not just doing the actions. So I'm really glad you brought this up. It's doing the actions and then creating the iterations off of the data that you're receiving that allows you to scale. So you have to do both. You have to take the actions and then you have to iterate and do that with enough volume across a long enough time period and you will succeed. It's not just one or the other. You have to do both. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's mm -hmm. great advice. Cause like, that's, that's basically what I talk about on my channel, right? Like when it comes to outreach, especially I'm like, right. dude, just like, if you track everything, like it's, it's, it's almost inevitable that you will start booking a shit ton of calls, right? Because yeah. if you literally send a hundred messages, change like your hook, change your offer, whatever, do that like five or six times, you're going to have a higher converting outreach message, right? Like, and it, that's what happened to me. Like I was doing like, I was doing the Upwork strategy at the beginning. So mm -hmm. I had to manually track every single one, right? Which is a pain in the ass. But like, I literally saw my numbers increase over time. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I, I know that if I send out like a hundred or 150 messages or proposals, I'm going to get a client. Like, like I just knew 100%. the numbers. And like, if you can, yeah, like you said, just um reiterate but also like have something to look at so you can actually do the iteration right um so you have to be tracking you have to be like recording everything but um 100%. yeah no that's that makes a lot of sense um so so let's say like you know you're someone because i mean like back then you kind of started with like you know a few different business models do you think like just diving into smma is like or diving into an agency is the best way to start for a beginner or do you think there's like kind of baby steps you could do to work up to that because i know people talk about like people ask me like oh should i va for someone should i like i don't know um be a freelancer first like what do you think is the best way to approach that not everyone's an entrepreneur hmm. not everyone's an entrepreneur yeah. but it seems like everyone wants to be one because they think it's sexy so if you can have the self-awareness to understand your your strengths and your weaknesses you can kind of discern whether or not you are truly an entrepreneur and whether or not you're going to maximize your success working for yourself or working for someone else. When I started off, I partnered with a guy who was good at sales because like you, I'm super introverted. I hated talking to people. I felt awkward on the phone. Like I didn't want to do it. So I partnered with somebody who was really good at sales and I just did all the media buying. And I was making five, six K a month, basically as a media buyer, working a few hours a day, just 17 years old, fucking jerking off and running ads like that was that was my life dude i was just that, that was it i was a little 17 year old shit who knew how to run facebook ads but like you can do that in the beginning dude you don't need to own a whole agency you can make bro media buying is a goal it's a blue ocean and nobody talks about it everybody talks about high ticket sales become an appointment setter build an agency get into drop shipping if you can just learn how to run Facebook ads for local businesses and you get like three or four agencies that you just run ads for, dude, 
10K, 20K a month, easy, because it's in such high demand. Everybody needs it. As the space grows, the space of social media marketing and the, the intelligence of how to actually social, social media market doesn't really grow that much. There's a, such a demand and a clear need for people who know how to deliver results via Facebook and Instagram ads. So a golden nugget for everybody listening to this right now. If you're not having success in your agency, get really good at running ads. It's so easy too. Most people are just scared because like the back end of Facebook's intimidating. So they just never do it. But it is easy to run ads. And I stand by that. You just have to watch some videos, put in the work. And like we said, test and iterate. So that's one option. Um, if you're not good at the back end stuff, but you like talking to people, I'm really a big believer in finding good partners. Like a state AI would not be where it is without my partner, Jared Curry, who's amazing at sales. He's a great leader. He's a He's the polar opposite of me when it comes to like, not saying I'm not a good leader, but like he's the polar opposite personality wise. And so our dynamic has allowed us to scale way faster because I bring to the table skills that he doesn't have. He brings to the table skills that I don't have. If I didn't have Jared and I had to do all the sales and marketing myself, dude, I'd be at like maybe 50, 100K a month. And he probably would have plateaued around 100, 150K a month too, because he doesn't really care about product or client success like I do. So if you can find a really good partner to balance out your skill sets and your lack of skills, rather, you can go way faster, way further. But in the beginning, get the experience under somebody else's dime. Go close, go set appointments, go uh, just run ads for somebody. Become a media buyer if you're not into to sales and talking to people like that. There's so many options. Use that knowledge. And if you feel ready to jump ship, go jump ship. But when you do it, go all in and never look back. Most people half in, half out because they got used. They got comfortable. They got used to working for somebody else. Fuck that. If you're going to jump ship, you got to go all in and you can't look back. Yeah. And like, and that's such a good point. Like, I think media buying is kind of like not really talked about because when you think about it, the minimum you pay media buyers is 500 a month, right? Like absolute minimum, like four or 500 a month, right? But a lot of the time, the people that you find on like Upwork or Fiverr or whatever to do that work at that price point, they often suck. Like they're, they're just really bad. And plus they, I mean, no offense to like people with, you know, that are born in other countries, Absolutely. but like it, it's not their first language, right? And like, but a lot of the time you need to understand copy. You need to understand like at least the English language at a pretty proficient level just to run like basic ads right but a lot of the time oh, these people yeah. overseas can't even do that so if you step in at the same price point which is pretty good because you're gonna you can run like five to ten clients for an agency for like 500 a month each you're good to go right you're yeah. gonna get a shit ton of experience and you're 100%. gonna be better than everyone else they can hire um, so that's a great you have a ton of case studies too you have a ton of case yeah. studies you yeah. can leverage for your own agency so i don't even know if i should keep going into this but like <laughs> screw it because i so before state ai i was running a company called smma fulfillment.com it was a white label agency and we just ran ads for other agencies and we mm -hmm. had like eight clients we did like 35k a month just create your own it's going to be competition for us but i don't i'm not really active in it anymore so i don't care just create your own white label get really good at ads and just say hey i white label for people it's 297 per account boom you get one good agency who scales up that's the cool thing about the white label model. It's a net negative churn. Most businesses are, are their positive churn. So they lose more and more clients every single month. But with a white label, your clients actually bring you on more clients every single month. So we worked with like six agencies, but with those same exact six core clientele, we went from 20K a month to 35K a month because the agencies kept growing and we just doubt in their processes, ran their ads. That was that. That's a quarter million a year business model right there that nobody's doing because they think white label is complex, but it's not complex. It's actually way easier than scaling an actual agency, which is a red ocean. White label is a blue ocean. Consider that a nugget, guys. If you're competing with us, that's fair. Bring it. But uh, seriously, take that take that, and run with it if you guys want because uh, it's, it's a blue ocean for sure. You just start your own white label and then boom, 10K a month, just like that. Not just that like easy. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like that. but, I mean that's that that kind of raises another really important point, which um, you know, I've found to be true at least in my own case is it's much easier to to s succeed whether you're a beginner or like an advanced entrepreneur in a blue ocean, right? Yeah, and you don't have to. It doesn't have to be like this brand new thing, like just something where people just aren't focusing, uh, where people like when a business owner doesn't hear the, the same message like 20 times per day, it's a great, there's, there's so many like ways to just become successful, make 10K per month, just by offering something different, 
right um and yeah. like it's it's it makes such a world of difference especially because it's like the idea of um it's it's like what is it driving a i mean i'm not, like it's like it's like rowing a wooden boat versus like um having like a cruise ship yeah right? like it doesn't matter how good of a of a pilot or what is it called captain you are like if you're, you're gonna go faster are you gonna go further in the cruise ship right or the the yacht or whatever right so it's just like uh, sorry go ahead it's it's sorry to interrupt but it's uh you're you're making me think of this idea that i've talked about for a few years it's the modern gold rush the mm. people who got rich in the gold rush were not the people who dug for the gold they were the people who sold the shovels to the people who dug for the gold all these agency owners are digging for gold some of them will strike it big some of them will but the people who sell the shovels the course creators <laughs> right course creators are killing agencies dude these course creators are doing 500k a million 100k a month easy and their agencies have never touched that these course creators are killing it these people who sell coaching these people who sell how to become a high ticket closer they're selling the shovel that's why we work with realtors in our agency everybody's trying to become a realtor right it's such a popular business so we're like look we'll just sell the shovel so if you can find the people digging for gold and sell them something sell them the shovel to help them find the gold you will guarantee your wealth more than the people who are risking it digging for the gold. So another uh, thing to keep in mind that kind of touches on what you're saying, the market is probably the most important thing when it comes to business. Mark Andreessen, the founder of Andreessen Horowitz, guy's worth billions and billions of dollars. He did a whole blog post on this about a decade ago. I actually just made a YouTube video on it that says the market will pull the product out of the startup. If you can pick the right market, the market will tell you the product you need to you need to build. So choosing your market, choosing what you're actually delivering, who you're delivering it to, choosing your vehicle. Is it a rowboat or is it a carnival cruise yacht, right? Like <sighs> that is so important, like you said, Ryan. So yeah, just to add that on to people, find the people digging for gold and sell them the shovel if you're not having any success finding the gold yourself. Yeah, and like I think there's a kind of a disclaimer we should put in there which is like sure. if you've never run an agency before don't try to be like a youtube guru and sell this shitty like one thousand dollar course because thank you for that. yes you will make money in like maybe for the short term but you're gonna you're gonna be like you're, you're gonna get exposed very quickly um yep. your product is gonna be shit and your your life your life um what is it your lifetime value as an entrepreneur is gonna be very low right your business okay. is not gonna last very long um and it's just like, it's kind of the idea of kind of like being a YouTuber myself, right? And you you yourself as well. It's like, we know that the earlier we cash out and like, you know, start a course and everything, the lower the the lower the kind of enterprise value is going to be of our brand and yeah. of our business. Um, because we know that there's only so much, there's only so much depth we can have and to provide a good product and to have like good customer um, feedback and all that kind of stuff. And like, I mean, this is kind of, I mean, you, you kind of get into that trap when you're just starting your own online business. I know I did the same with drop shipping, um, but you know, it's, it's like, yes, sell the shovels, but make sure you're like actually in a place where you, you're, you're kind of qualified to sell the shovels, right? Otherwise, like go learn the basic skills, like go learn marketing, like go run a business first and then you can teach, teach people about it. Right. And if 100%. not document your journey, like kind of you and I are doing right. hundred percent. That's such an important point. And you and I kind of talked about this on our first call, like, mm being able to stand behind what you're selling. Yeah. If you're going to sell the shovel, it still needs to be a quality made shovel. Can't be some bullshit $5 Walmart, like blue digging this. It needs to be a legit shovel. Now the shovel isn't just a course. You can sell appointment setting services. You can sell mm -hmm. media buying. You can sell, I'll make your agency website. Like it does, it can be whatever you want, right? Absolutely. It doesn't need to just be a course, um, but just finding the market and finding something to sell them it itself is the kind of the bigger uh, emphasis I'm trying to make. But yes, mm -hmm. don't go sell your shitty 997 course on YouTube and scam people. It's happened to plenty of people in this space and it always backfires. And business is a marathon, not a sprint. Selling a shitty shovel is a sprint. It's not a marathon. So that's a that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I don't want people hitting me up saying, dude, I bought this guy's. <laughs> thousand dollar course because you told him to sell the damn shovel and i got screwed <laughs> so yeah I don't want that to happen. that's such a big problem i have in my channel people are like dude what course do i buy what's the best course i'm like i honestly don't know man like <laughs> sometimes you just gotta like get burned once or twice to like really figure out you know um and just be more careful next time 
but yeah it's it's definitely a difficult space to to like even learn in because you don't know who to listen to yeah. a lot of the time i feel like there's a few clear options though like there is yeah <laughs> i'm not affiliated with anybody but like just i don't mind putting on record if you don't mind me saying um Go for it. my thoughts i feel like i i don't know charlie i haven't bought charlie's course but i just feel based off his content his product's probably pretty damn good like i'd be surprised if charlie morgan's product is is bad Joel Kaplan, I know from firsthand experience, he has a really, really good product because that's the program that I went through. That program changed my life, right? And I don't have a a link for anybody to buy Joel's thing. But um, yeah, I feel like Charlie, Joel, and then there's probably like a couple others that are just kind of clear. Like you should be able to tell that the person you're buying from is legit or not. Like you can, you, at this point, there's so many options the people who are flashing lifestyle are not the people you want to buy knowledge from. The people who are showing information and are sharing knowledge, they've proven to you that they have the knowledge. And if it makes sense, if you get value from it, they probably have more of it that you can pay for. The people who you have to be careful of are the ones who are like, check out this watch, check out this Lambo, check out these girls, check out this house. They're not flashing anything of value to you. They're just tricking you. They're just tricking you. They're saying, look at what I have. Look at what I have. You can have this too if you just buy my course, but they're not showing you the actual information that allowed them to get there, which means most likely the thing that got them there is the course they're selling. So be smart, discern, do the research, do the diligence, ask people, say who has bought Joel Kaplan's course? Is it good? Who has bought Iman Ghazi's course? Is it good? Ask for feedback. You'll hear the answers. Just don't waste your money before you actually do the diligence. How yeah. to buy a course in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> there's a good point you made there which is like you should look for someone who's flashing student results as opposed to lambos right i think that's one of the biggest mm. telltale signs that they actually are doing something mm. proper um yeah. but i do want to switch gears for a second because sure. like i think there's one topic which you can speak on really well which a lot of people don't i think i just don't think there's enough content on youtube for it which is service delivery right like everyone talks about client acquisition um and you know Everyone and their mom knows how to get to 10K per month now <laughs> with all the content out there, but no one really knows how to get like, how do you get results for clients consistently, especially if you're a beginner, right? Like what's the approach? Um, yeah. And like, I guess the, I guess the question we can start with is like, what do you think are the core elements of a great service delivery? Yeah. So Hermosi breaks this down really well in hundred million dollar offers. Um, I forget all the four, uh, kind of elements of an offer, but it's basically dream outcome, perceived likelihood of achievement, time to value, and then effort and sacrifice. I think those are the four. So what is the dream outcome the person wants? What is the likelihood that they will actually achieve it with your offer? Um, what is the time to actually get there? Do they have to work out for a year or can they eat a pill and they get a six pack? And then four is uh, what effort and sacrifice do they have to put in, right? Do they have to eat super clean and uh, get rid of their favorite hobbies or can they just keep doing the shit they do and they'll be good without any additional effort or sacrifice. So that's kind of the four elements that encompass an offer that is completely taken from Hermosi. I just think that provides perspective because your offer is a projection of your product, right? It is, it is a extension of what your product does. Service to me, in our business of State AI, there's three core elements. There is relationship, there's results, and there's recognition. And these are the three core elements of a community. For us, a State AI, we have built a community. We're not just a lead gen company. We don't just run ads online. We have a done with you consulting and coaching community where we teach realtors, how do you follow up with leads? How do you scale a real estate business? How do you become more than a real estate agent, but an actual entrepreneur? And so the three elements of our service are the relationship we have with the clients. It's the recognition that they get within the community because when people feel recognized, they stay and they want to give back more to the community. And then it's the actual results. At the end of the day, results speak louder than anything you can say. So those are the three core elements for us. Um, for most agencies, it's going to come down to two elements, which is results and expectations. And most people just think results, 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 like results are all that matters. But I've had so many clients who have crushed it. They've made tens of thousands of dollars off thousands of dollars in ad spend, like 10, 20 X ROIs, and they leave. 
And this happened to me for in, in the gym niche. This happened to me with the Kairos. This happened to me with realtors. So I'm like, why, why are they leaving when they're crushing it? Well, they liked the results. The results were good, but they were expecting way more. If I told you, Ryan, that you're going to look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the next month, and in the next month you look like, I don't know, somebody who's a little bit less jacked than Dwayne The Rock Johnson, <laughs> you're going to be like, okay, cool. Like, all right, I look like a bodybuilder now. This is sick, but I don't look like The Rock. Kevin so, Hart. Old... <laughs> Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. He's jacked. That's a good one. You look, you look, look like Kevin Hart. Um, that's a weird image, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you don't, but you don't look like the rock. So it's like, man, I'm, I, I feel great, but my expectations were so much greater than this. So where most agencies go wrong is they focus on results, 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 but they never take the time to clearly align the expectations with the client before they ever get started and issues arise where expectations defer. So if your client's expecting one thing, if your uh, girl is respect is expecting one thing, if your best friend or your family member is expecting one thing, it doesn't matter. This is just human psychology. If the person on the other end of the deal is expecting something other than what you are expecting, issues are inevitable. So getting really clear on expectations and for us, what we do, just to give a a tangible action item for people is we do a 160 slide presentation with every single client that comes through our doors. Every single client who joins our company, we do an hour and a half long presentation of here's what to expect. Here's the pros. Here's the cons. Here's the good. Here's the bad, but here's what's possible. Look at all our case studies. If you do put in the work, if you do follow what we're teaching, you're not going to get rich after one month. You might have two, three weeks of low quality leads. You might have slow ads for a month. Your ad account might get disabled. This happens. But when we just cover everything beforehand, when those things do arise, at which they are in, they are inevitable with you work with enough clients, you're going to have this shit happen. But if you just mention it before they actually happen, people feel way more safe because they're like, oh, they weren't trying to hide this from me. Where people get worried is when they lose trust in you and they lose trust because the thing that happened to them is not what you told them was going to happen. You didn't tell me my ad account was going to get disabled, Ryan. You didn't tell me my leads might not answer the phone. You told me X, Y, and Z. Everything was going to be great. Everything was going to be beautiful. Now I, you lost my trust and I don't want to work with you anymore. People leave agencies because they lose trust. They leave agencies because they lose trust. And if you set the right expectations from day one and you're really radically honest, the clients are going to trust you way more and they're not going to jump ship in the first month, the first two months, because you've set the real expectations that this takes work. Leads are not an overnight get rich quick scheme, right? So we are just very clear with that expectation. And uh, at the same time, we're also showing them what's possible. So we show them our best case studies. We show them our most successful people. And we say, look, if you're here to get rich in a month, you're in the wrong place leave now. But if you're willing to put in the work across the next six months, build a real pipeline, you will close deals. You will level up. You will build a business that you didn't think you were capable of building because this system will provide that for you, but you have to put in the work. So that's kind of our angle. Um, I could rant about it all day, but expectations and results, they have to go hand in hand. Most people just focus on one and not the other. And then if you're going to build a community, it's relationship, recognition, and results. If you get those three things down, then your clients will stay and your retention will be on point. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good um, points. I think, I mean, I'm going to take notes on that <laughs> regarding the expectations because I think I've been kind of slacking on that end as well. Um, but I mean, let's talk about results, right? Because I think like you, you kind of have to get to a point where you can deliver results before you can really like worry about expectations, um, community, all that kind of stuff. So, like someone's yeah. just starting out, like, maybe knows a little bit of marketing, you know, watch some YouTube videos, maybe took a course or two, but they're just not, they're just not getting results for their clients. Like, how do you, how do you go about that? Like maybe, I mean, I'm sure there's like, you know, a know-how that you can apply, but sure. like, how do you go about actually learning all this stuff and like not screwing over your clients while you're doing that? Um, what are your thoughts? Good question. There's a, a kind of framework we can use to reverse engineer this, right? So, where is the where is the breakdown in the machine? Are your clients not getting leads? Are they getting leads, but they're not getting appointments? Are they getting appointments, but they're not closing? Are they closing, but they're not retaining? 
Like those are the four elements. Are they not getting anything? Are they not converting into calls? Are they not converting into deals? Are they not retaining the deals they're getting depending on your niche? You have to understand what the actual bottleneck is first. If you're just not getting leads via your ads, then you have an ad problem and you would probably be served well by paying somebody with expertise in that niche. Go into like the go high level Facebook group, go into um any of these agency groups and just say, Hey, who's the best in this niche? Go message that person and say, Hey, I'll pay you X, Y, and Z for your time to show me how you do what you do. That's probably better than just buying a course because you're actually getting hands-on experience for that niche. Once you have that template, if it's really worked for them, like if they really had success with their clients with that niche, and if they can send you their website, their testimonials, all that stuff, you can kind of decide if it's real or not then the problem is probably no longer the ads. Ads will still be a problem. You'll still have markets and clients that don't get great results with ads. It's just inevitable if you work with enough people. So get that expectation with yourself now. Like just expect that not everyone's gonna get the same results on ads. Now that you're getting leads, and for the most part, your ads are successful, well, here comes the underlying issue in the agency game that everyone faces and nobody really talks about. And that is my clients are not converting the leads that I'm sending them. I'm getting my client leads, but they're saying that the leads suck. They're saying that the leads aren't good. The leads aren't converting. They're not making any money. That's because your clients have no idea how to sell and they don't know how to talk to people and they're not good at sales and they think they are, but they're not. So there's a few things we do for this. We have scripts, we have frameworks, we have structured video trainings from industry experts, and that's been super valuable for us. If you have some clients that are succeeding and some that aren't, ask your clients, get all your successful clients onto one call and ask them, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Alex Ramosi told us this, by the way. So this is just like this. Don't listen to me. Listen to him. He's just like, we got all our successful clients at gym launch. We got them on a Zoom call and we just said, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And before Alex was uh, a gym owner, he was a management consultant. And basically he said the management consulting method is get a ton of different sources of data and then find out what the, the similar things that all data sources are doing. Have having, uh, Let me find a better way to put this. Find the similar activities, the congruent activities that every source of data is following. So don't do the one-off things that one client said worked really well for them, right? Unless it really seems like it's going to be a good idea. Don't do like the, oh, we send all of our clients a goodie bag and that increases our show rate do the things that all the clients are saying that they're doing that are congruent across each person we call our leads right away crazy right we call her leads right away who would do that we follow up with them x amount of times we send them text messages if they don't show up we check in on that we like get all of your successful data and then just transfer that to all of your other clients if you don't have enough clients to do that then again Pay somebody who has already solved this problem. Money loves speed, right? And speed loves money. So you can move faster if you can just throw money at a problem and say, look, you had the same problem I had. Let me pay you for an hour of your time. Let me see your scripts. Let me see your GHL snapshot. How much does that cost? Just buy somebody else's solution. It's worth $1,000, $2,000 if you can build a $200,000 a month company off of it. A state AI, our ads have been ran by other people real estate agencies. Our drip sequence in GHL, it's literally another agency owner snapshot. Like it's just, everybody has it. Like you can get it. We just do it better. We make micro innovations, but the template that we started off with, everybody has it. So if I had to pay a thousand, two thousand dollars for that, and I just built a 300 K a month company, was the template worth it? Yeah. It was like a thousand X ROI. So Money loves speed. Speed loves money. That's the process. Get your clients on who are successful. Learn from them. Most people focus on the clients who are failing, but there are some clients who are winning once you get enough. Direct more of your energy into those people and learn from them. The ones who aren't succeeding, like I said, figure out what is the actual gap, what is the actual breakdown in the machine, and then find somebody who has solved that specific problem, ideally for your specific niche and just leverage their expertise instead of trying to figure it out yourself. Smart people try to use their own knowledge. Wise people use the knowledge of others. So 
that'd be my thoughts. I could go in more in depth if you'd like, but that's the framework that I would apply if I was a struggling agency owner uh, when it comes to service delivery. Yeah, that's actually great advice that I I don't think I've heard too much of, which is like, I mean, I kind of did the same thing of like, I pay people to learn kind of the marketing side of things. Um, But yeah, like like actually just paying someone for one specific solution, which is like the one you're struggling with, I think is really good, a really good idea (laughs) because you don't need like this whole marketing course um, or this whole like um, whatever course to, to figure it out. Right. It's like, how do I get people to show up for appointments? That's that's really all you need to pay for. And that's going to change your whole business really. Um, Find someone who solved it. Yeah. Find someone who did it. And if you don't have the money for that, and your clients are doing it themselves. One just thing to add on that's super important. Set the expectation that you are going to get the leads and you're going to provide the training to convert the leads into appointments, but you can't close the deals for the client. Like the better you can communicate that idea of like, look, you have to do your job. I'm going to do my job. And that's how this is going to be a successful partnership. The better you can communicate that idea, the longer your clients will stay. You have to transfer ownership of the outcome to the client. Transfer ownership of the outcome of your system to the client. And if you can have them taking ownership over the results, then it's a way different experience than you said you're going to get me leads. You said you're going to get me appointments. You said we were going to make money. No, I said I was going to get you leads and that together we'd work on converting those leads into deals as partners. You still have to hold up your end of the partnership. It's a different conversation. So if you can try to frame it that way in the beginning, um, that also goes a long way. Yeah, for sure. And kind of like along that line is, do you suggest people kind of, I know this is like widely debated in this space, but do you recommend people start with free trials? I do. I do. Um, trying to figure out my lighting here. I feel like a damn fake YouTuber. Um, I got to have a ring light too, actually. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I feel like it's, it's like making me blur. Like maybe I'm putting it on the wrong side, uh, whatever. Um, I do. Look. My first, yeah, shit hurts, dude. <laughs> uh, my first two agencies, we just did free trials, and mm. that follows the popcorn effect methodology of plant seeds, nurture them, and watch them grow. We had so many free trials. We probably did like 50, 60 free trials. Of course, we got to twenty k a month. All we have to do is convert ten out of those fifty at 1500 a month. And that's 15 K a month right there. That's a 200 K a year business. So people are against free trials. I don't know why. I think it's because they want instant gratification and they don't understand the actual persistence that is required in success because people flash these fancy lifestyles and they say, get rich. It's easy. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Somebody has to tell you that's not how this game works. So work for free in the beginning. You haven't proved that you're worth anything else than free. It's just the truth. When I was 17 calling dentists, what am I going to say? Pay me 1500 a month. I've never ran a Facebook ad in my life, but trust me on this one, doc. I know what I'm doing. I said, fuck you, kid. <laughs> Hang up the phone. No. Hey, I'll work for free for two weeks to prove to you that I can deliver you results. And if you're not happy, if you're not ecstatic after two weeks, then you never have to talk to me again. Would that be unreasonable? Something like that, right? Like that's your script. That gives the doctor or the Cairo or the a uh, real estate agent, whoever, gym owner, that gives them a, an actual reason to hear you out, right? So free trials, if you do enough of them, you will build a six-figure agency for sure. Enough free trials, you'll get to six figures. Yeah, I think I'm definitely in that lane too, where, because um, I know a lot of gurus tell you like, don't take free trials, you know, you're, you know, you're worth your money, but you're not worth that much money, to be honest. And like, I think there's a lot of benefits to a free trial for yourself too, right? Like you build a lot of confidence from yeah. not feeling like a fucking imposter because you are being an imposter, right? Yep. You are being fake. Um, and I think like when you actually start getting results for people, you know, your sales calls will start converting better, right? You're, you're start, you actually have some testimonials. You have people who exactly. stay with you will actually like, be happy with you because you actually built that trust already by getting them what they want. Um, and I think like, uh-huh. and I think like, especially if you're young, like you don't need that. Like, I mean, unless you're like in a, in a dire situation, like where you're like, you need to pay some bills or something you should just take the free trial. Like it's going to, you get so much. And the other thing is you get so much more volume, right? Like you said, you get 50 free trials. Like that's 50 learning opportunities as opposed, as opposed to like what, like three clients over the course yeah. of like three months. Like it's, it's a world of difference in terms of like your 100%. growth and all that kind of stuff. Um, Dude, so yeah, you said it beautifully spot on. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually thinking of um, taking uh, like starting free trials myself just to get more volume into my business. Um, Cause I watched that video with, I think Joel Kaplan, he had interviewed one of his students who was like killing it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
yeah free trials. Mean, let's talk about free trials they're like oh shit this is like a great idea yeah. right especially yeah. once you have like a little bit of cash flow too and you're like not going to go broke or whatever um then it's like you, you should definitely just try to get as many results as possible 100 percent. most statisticians statisticians i don't know how you say that word most statisticians say that you need a minimum of a hundred different data points in order to have statistical significance. You need a <laughs> hundred data points to have statistical significance. You're basing decisions off of 10 sets of data. You did 10 free trials. You did 10 cold calls. You did, you worked with 10 pain clients. It's not enough. The minimum that is required for statistical significance is 33 points of data. So until you've done 33 free trials, don't give up on the game. Till you've done 33 free trials, don't say that free trials don't work. You don't have enough data. Don't listen to me. Listen to the statisticians or however you say that word. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here, guys. 33 clients before you give 33, up. <laughs> 100%. 33 free trials before you give up. That should be your number. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And I don't think anyone's really talked about that, talked about it that much. Um, so thanks for like emphasizing on that. So yeah. Kind of like, I guess, kind of starting to wrap up here. Like, what do you think is, you know, the future of SMMA agencies? Um, I mean, the, I kind of know what the answer is going to be, but like for someone who's like, yeah. you know, is SMMA dead in 2023? Like, what do you think it's going to look like in the next two or three years? Because, I mean, you can say like, oh, like markets never get saturated, but, you know, like it's it's definitely like in a way that the business model is definitely going to change, I think. Um, so like, um, and how do you think people should adjust to that? And what do you think it's going to, what do you think it's going to go? There's a lot of innovation happening in the digital marketing world right now with AI, with TikTok, with different mechanisms. I avoid shiny object at all cost. When TikTok started arising, we I just like said no. Like everybody's like, should we do it, Matt? Should we? Do? I was just like, no, because the question is, what can you become the best in the world at? In the book Good to Great, which is that big red one behind me, Jim Collins this is one of the best business books of all time. Jim Collins says the most successful companies have one thing that they believe they can be the best in the world at. Best in the world. So we asked ourselves that at our agency. The question, the answer is not TikTok ads. The, the answer is not GHL drip sequences. The answer is community. We want to build the best real estate community on the face of the earth. That is our one thing. So that's my personal approach to the innovation that's happening is focus on the thing we have potential to be the best in the world at. And if you do that, it doesn't matter if you become the best in the world. If you become really, really good, you'll get rich. Like, that's it. You don't need to actually become the best in the world, but it'd be a lot cooler if you did. Um, as far as the future of agencies, so I guess to back that up, for people who don't know what that is yet, they're figuring it all out, some of these ideas might be worth looking into. Like, what if you build a really good cold email system for agencies what if you became the best in the world at b2b cold email for smmas that's a hundred 200 300k a month company right there so what is the thing you have potential to become the best in the world at as a company or as an entrepreneur or rather as a person what is your one thing do as much testing as you can to try to find that out and then just go all in on it and avoid all the shiny objects that will come your way. Just say, no, no, no. Put blinders on and just focus on that thing that you can be the best in the world at. For agencies as a whole, to speak about it broadly, I guess. Yes, the market is getting more saturated, but it's been saturated. It's a, it's It's been a huge competitive market for such a long time. There is always room for the winners at the top. Like the top 10, 20, 30% of agencies are still going to crush because everyone else is going to get wiped out. And there's still going to be a massive opportunity for those big players. So there's always room for the best players at the top. That's important to remember. As a whole, I think the world is shifting into communities. We're, be, we're very tribal creatures, human beings, right? So we're starting to see that get emphasized with the digital world all these digital tribes reddit forums and backing of this brand and uh, you know all of these companies building communities i heard the co-founder of twitch emmett Shear, say in an interview one time the best thing that twitch ever did was transition from an entertainment platform to a community platform so i think the best agencies the best companies are going to be the ones that build tribes and communities around their service and product 
that is going to accelerate them. That's going to make them sustainable. And the question that nobody is talking about in this industry is how do you build a sustainable business with all this innovation around you? But communities have been with us since humans existed. It is the most proven business model in the world, right? Like religion, whether you are religious or not, it's a community, right? So communities have been with us since we were alive on this planet. It is the most sustainable business. It's the most, uh, it has the most longevity of any model that I've ever seen. So I'm very bullish on the idea of building communities around your product and service because the need for validation and acceptance is never going to leave the human being, the human mind. That need for acceptance and that need to fit into a tribe or community, it's not going anywhere. It can't. It's innate in our DNA. So I believe the model is transitioning to communities. And I think business in general is transitioning into communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, so like for, <laughs> Or, you know, that 17 year old who's watching this, like, has maybe one yeah. client or no clients. He's like, <laughs> How the fuck do I build a community? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, my initial assumption is like, I mean, is get good at what you do and be different and build a brand around that, a brand around that. But like, what do you think? Like, how, how does someone go from <laughs> scrapping around with one or two clients to building like good question. a question? I'm community? glad you asked this because, like, the top comment on the, the video I did with Thomas Gannett was like, This is a cool video. This is awesome advice for people who have like 50 clients, but I just started. So this is a good question. Um, how do you build a community if you have one client right now? We didn't build a community until we had a hundred active clients. Hmm. So the first question is not how do you build a community? It's how do you build enough clients to even build a community? How do you get enough clients in the first place? I would get to 30, 40 clients. Again, that 33, that is a powerful number. 33 sets of data, 33 active clients, then you can start working on your community, right? We didn't do it until 100. We probably could have done it sooner. It is what it is. But I would get to 30, 40, 50 clients active before I build a community. And the cool thing is that's going to force you to make your ad product, your actual follow-up systems. It's going to make you make all of that stuff really, really good so you can keep enough clients to get to 30, 40, 50. Because if your ad product sucks, your community is eventually going to dwindle because you have this cool thing and then this bad thing. And this is the challenge with communities. You have to figure out how to make the ads and the follow-up really good, and then the community will kind of build itself. So in the beginning, focus on the ads, focus on the product, focus on the back end, and then build the community on top of that. But the question is not how do you build a community, it's how do you build enough clients to create a community in the first place. And that goes back to what we've been talking about this whole podcast, outreach, consistency, micro actions across a macro time frame that will create the desired results. So yeah, I, I guess I would say that. I don't know if that's a, a good answer or if that's going to leave people like, damn, man, that's not what I wanted to hear. But that's that's the truth, I think. Yeah. And it's true, right? I mean, you look at like businesses like our industry, like dropshipping, right? Like how does a beginner get into dropshipping these days? It's a lot harder than it was back then. But, you know, that's just how it is, right? When you choose to enter an industry that is, easy to get into and has been yeah. for the last decade you're gonna have to play you're gonna have to be on top of your game as opposed to like this you know just this random new industry where anyone can get in like crypto for the last like three years very different story right? but that's like if i still think point. like i still think smma is like one of the best business models to learn like real business skills um as opposed to like you know all these other cheap gimmicks out there but mm -hmm. it's going to be harder right and if you want to excel it's going to be even harder but that's just kind of how it is but at the same time you also have like you know, all these new uh, sources of information, um, free, free content, even like courses that are like getting better and better each year. Mm. So like, there's going to be more competition, but there's also going to be like the, the bar, the, the floor is also going to be higher. I feel like, right. If you know what you're doing, or if you actually like go hard at it. Why do you think, if I can ask you a question, yeah. um, why do, cause you're in a, a kind of, I feel like the fact that you have much larger following and you have a discord and like you're talking to maybe newer agency owners so frequently. And the fact that, you know, you're in this, you're in the journey of scaling up the agency yourself. Like you might have a different perspective than me. Why do you think most people enter this industry just to leave it without success? I mean, I think the answer is obvious, which is like, it's the same as any other industry, which is they're just here for a quick buck. They got sold the dream by some big guru um, I'm not going to like, you know, mention names or anything because that's just yeah. the nature of it. Like that's just how the, the, 
the online business world works, right? But I think they got sold a dream and they didn't realize like how hard it was going to be. Um, and I think people are a little more transparent about how hard the journey is these days. But with that being said, like it's it's painful, right? Like it's like I'm sure you can relate to it. Like the it's it's actually a lot of pain to go through those initial stages. Um, and I think a lot of people just aren't ready for that. Like they're just kind of dicking around at home playing video games. And they're like, oh, let me try this thing. I was like, it was the same thing for me, right? I tried drop shipping. I was like, oh, let me try this random shit. Made like a few, made a few sales. And I was like, oh, let's like, let's go all in now. And then once you get to like the business part of it, which is like building systems, hiring people, like building something sustainable, trying to develop real skills, you realize like, yeah, shit, maybe this like <laughs> is it's it's a completely different game. You have to like change. It's the idea of changing who you are, right? Uh, before you can actually like mm. change the world around you, and people aren't ready to do that. Mm. Like it's um because I talk obviously like you said, I talk with a lot of beginner entrepreneurs, and their biggest problem isn't like tactics or strategy or whatever; it's themselves. Like they're they're spending like an hour on outreach a day, or every other day, and then they're like playing games for like nine hours, right? It's like, and that's I went through the exact same struggle, right? It's like on my channel, I'm like this is who I used to be. And like, I think a lot of us used to be like that, but that's yeah. where most people are. It's, it's just, they're just not ready to be entrepreneurs um, yet. Not, not saying right. they can't be, but just not yet. Right. But they don't realize how hard it is to get past that level one. Well said. Well said. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, dude. I agree. It's, it's your business is a reflection of yourself. So if you're not where you want to be in your business, it's because you're not who you need to be yourself. Everybody asks, how do I grow my business? How do I grow my business? How do I fix my business? question is how do you grow yourself how do you fix yourself as a person right just like you said so um yeah dude that's i'm glad i feel like that's a spot on answer probably a good place to to end this off unless you have any uh, other things you wanted to to chat about i know we've been going for a minute so yeah i do want to end on one question which sure. is like because i think it's relevant to a lot of the audience watching this which is if you could give yourself one piece of advice to your 16 year old 17 year old self whatever age you are when you just started what would it be yeah um shifted my ring light for this one so i got to give a good, <laughs> good answer so the question is if i could give one piece of advice to my 16 17 year old self what would it be yeah i would tell myself This quote, it's my favorite quote of all time. I say it probably like three times a week. <laughs> Be careful what you think because your thoughts determine your words. Your words determine your actions. Your actions determine your habits. Your habits determine your character and your character determines your destiny. If you reverse engineer that entire process, that entire quote, our thoughts determine our destiny. So the reason you aren't where you want to be is because you are thinking the wrong way. Somewhere in your mind, you are having the wrong thoughts. You are having the wrong beliefs. As the Buddha said, and I'm a weirdo, so I like Buddhism and Christianity and all these different things. I take from all of them. All we are is the result of what we have thought. That's what the Buddha said. All we are is the result of what we have thought. And I can't, I don't know a better sentence in the history of words than all we are is the result of what we have thought. That is true in business. That is true in ourselves. That is true in our beliefs. All we are is the result of what we have thought. How do you change your thoughts? How do you maximize your thoughts? This is, I did a whole like 45 minute presentation on my YouTube about this. So I won't dive into all of it here. Um, but your environment determines your beliefs. Like your environment creates your beliefs because you base your beliefs on your current reality, right? And what you see, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, that is what you take as what is true and what you believe and think. So you have to change your environment. This doesn't just mean who and what you're around, but it's what you consume on a daily basis. What, do you, what are the inputs that are going into your mind on a daily basis? And are they conducive to the output that you want as a human being? Meaning if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be financially free, if you want to travel the world, you want to give back to other people and help others, well, what are the inputs that you're putting in and are they conducive? Like getting a vision for yourself is so valuable because once you have the vision for the macro, the micro decisions become super clear because you can just ask yourself, well, would eating this thing help me achieve my vision? Would hanging out with this person help me achieve this vision? Would playing this game or spending my time in this way help me achieve this vision? So come up with the vision and then just 
every time you have to make a decision, ask yourself, does this help me achieve the vision that I've set for myself? If the answer is no, don't do it. If the answer is yes, do it. That simple. Your thoughts determine your words. Your words determine your actions. Your actions determine your habits. Your habits determine your character. Your character determines your destiny. So we'll leave it with that. Beautiful. <laughs> well, Matt, thank you so much for coming on. This was uh, incredible. Drop some hot sauce for all of us and appreciate <laughs> it. Um, and, you know, I'd love to have you back in the future maybe, but I'm sure we'll, even if we don't, I'm sure. Um, I mean, you guys, if you guys don't know, Matt does have a YouTube channel. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. You guys can check it out. Um, he talks about actually building a really successful agency, unlike me, who you know is still in the process of building it. So if you guys want to hear from someone like that, make sure to check out his channel. But Matt, thanks again for coming on. Matt, this was Thank awesome. You, dude. And Appreciate I'm sure that. we'll talk soon.